my dear sewing friends, it's Elisa here with Thoughtful Creativity and thank you so much for tuning in today, especially because this video is like 1000% just for you because I already own three sweaters like this, um, but after you guys saw the video when we were talking about all things serger tips and tricks and you saw me wearing this sweater that I made and then a week later I did a pencil skirt drafting and sewing tutorial and I paired it with this gray sweater with this big voluminous bishop sleeve and you guys were bombarding me with comments um, underneath the videos with uh, saying that please do a tutorial on these sweaters and I thought you know what I do like this silhouette, I do like this style, it's easy to make, which we all love here. So I thought, you know what, let's make a fourth one and a sewing and drafting tutorial for you. So, and grab your fabric, we're gonna be working with stretch fabric. As always, you're gonna need just a few measurements and uh, it goes pretty quickly, about an hour and a half. Yeah, so let's get sewing. So the measurements, and as always in my videos, we start with the length of the actual garment. Today is no exception. The only thing is, usually I take a tailbone length because uh, for various reasons, I like it longer and also it makes it easier for sewing and pattern drafting purposes with proportions and how to determine them. But today, we don't really need this many proportions and I'm going to take it shorter because I just want it to be more form-fitting and fit onto the jacket for warmer months as well. So take your measuring tape and as always place it on the center back of your neckline on the very edge. Drop it as long as you want it and once you have dropped it to the length of your garment, place your finger on that spot, take it away and that's what we're going to put on your pattern paper. Tell you guys that I uh, need to make a trip to the dollar store because today I'm just using printer sheets. So if you're new here and you're just embarking on a journey of pattern drafting, then dollar store wrapping paper is the best thing instead of buying a super expensive pattern drafting paper, buy dollar store wrapping paper. It already has grid lines and they're one inch wide, which makes it super perfect and super convenient for drafting your patterns. Alrighty, next we're going to measure your shoulders. And here's the thing, this sweater that I made over here actually has a drop shoulder. You see how it drops right over here, right? So the seam does not sit on the actual edge of the shoulder. This one is a little bit different. This one actually sits right on the edge of the shoulder. So it really depends on what kind of silhouette are you going for, something that's a little bit more form-fitting or something that's a little bit looser. So it's totally up to you. But the way you're gonna do it, and you can also cheat a little bit, you can take a t-shirt that fits you really well and you like where the shoulders sit and you can just measure your t-shirt, why not? But usually what I do is, and it doesn't have to be super precise, you just take your measuring tape, place it like so, and just make sure that the edge of the measuring tape is right here where you want your shoulders to end, and take it away, fold it in half, and for me, that's going to be seven inches, but what we're going to do is, we're gonna add one extra little step. We're going to add one inch to the half measurement of your shoulders. So my half measurement is seven inches, plus one is going to be eight, and that's what's gonna go on our pattern paper. So next up is the neckline. And for the neckline, I always take those two standard measurements for me. And for you guys, you can take whatever you would like. However, remember these two things. Number one, neckline is one of the easiest things to adjust on the pattern. Of course, it depends on what kind of neckline, but this one is a really simple standard neckline. So better start conservative, so make it smaller because you can always cut it away and you can't add the fabric back on. And remember that there's also gonna be a neck band added to it as well, which will add an inch to the, to the overall neckline. So three and a half inches to the right and two and a half inches for the depth of my neckline. Yes. And then from the edge of your neckline, you're gonna take one inch up, and then from the edge of your shoulder line, you're gonna take one inch down. And you're gonna connect those two points with the straight line, and that will accommodate the curve of your shoulder, because our shoulders are not straight, they're usually on the angle, right? After that, with a dashed line, mark in your front neckline. You can always mark it as F for the front and then mark your back neckline as well. And you can abbreviate as B for the back as well. Now, draw a straight line from the edge of the shoulder all the way to the bottom of the pattern and then finish the hem. 
Now let's talk about the sleeves. And the sleeves is kind of the whole beauty of this pattern, right? So this little element over here, that's what we would like to make today. Now I usually start with a short sleeve first, just because it's a little bit easier to connect a short sleeve to the bodice. And then I transform that short sleeve into whatever sleeve you want to make including the bishop sleeve. Now here it is very important to mention that this is not a traditional way of drafting a sleeve. It will give you a little extra volume over here. Doesn't bother me. If it does bother you, you're more than welcome to draft it the traditional by the book method. This one is easier and goes faster and I like the result. So I hope you will enjoy it as well. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your measuring tape and you do want to measure how wide you would like it to be, right? So measure that. And then you will measure the length of your sleeve as well. So we're gonna start with a short sleeve. So I'm gonna take seven by seven, which makes a square. So let's get that drafted and let's get going on connecting those two. Now take your sleeve rectangle and align it together with the bodice piece, overlapping it by one inch and making sure that the sleeve goes under the same angle as the shoulder line. Now mark the bottom of the sleeve, which is the placement of the side seam on the sleeve in a current position. And then with a dashed curved line, mark the arm side. Repeat this dashed curved line on both on the sleeve and on the bodice. If you need more space in the bust area, you can always add it to the side seam right underneath the sleeve, just like so. Now, curve in the bottom of the sleeve by about a quarter of an inch for a more flattering shape overall. Now, if you are a member of this channel, then go ahead and write down all of your measurements into the measurement chart of your instruction sheet, which is a perk that you guys get for being a member of this channel, which is a paid function. So if you want to check it out, there's a join button next to subscribe button, and it will give you like a little trailer and a little overview of what, what kind of perks do you get. So I'm not going to really get into that right now. I'm sure you've heard me talk about it before. So if you want to check it out, go ahead and click the join button, and it will tell you everything that you guys need. Um, let's get back into the sewing and drafting now. To turn the short sleeve into a bishop sleeve, first we need to extend the length. Now take the length of a normal long sleeve for you and add three inches and then draw that length on your pattern paper. And for me that's going to be 22 inches altogether. For the width of your sleeve, I'm going to take a regular width of my wrist plus three inches as well. And for me that's going to be eight inches all together. Now with a dash curved line finish the pattern of the sleeve and please note that this is a very straightforward very simple way of drafting a bishop sleeve for knit fabrics not by the book at all but it really does work well for me as you have heard I've made four sweaters like this already and it always turns out really nice. Alrighty, since the main pattern pieces are ready, let's cut them out here. I have the bodice and the sleeve and let's get going on our fabric. So what I have here is some beautiful stretch fabric that I got from Fabric Mart some, uh, well, I don't know, many, many months ago, to be honest. And this is, let's take a look. This is a, a gray, pale gray, black cotton lycra space dyed stretch jersey knit. $14.99, no, that actually wasn't the price. I got it on sale because $14.99 would be too expensive for me for a yard of fabric. Place your fabric right sides together, put your pattern on top, and let's cut the fabric. Now, please remember that I draft all of my patterns without seam allowances, so you will need to add them now as you're cutting your fabric, as well as the hem. I have added two inches to the bottom of the pattern. Well, because I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do with the bottom of the pattern, whether I'm gonna just hem it or maybe add a band to the bottom. So we shall see by the end of this video. So cut your pattern pieces. Now that you have your pattern pieces cut out, you should have the front and the back and two sleeves. So let's start with a bodice. Take your back and take your front, place them right sides together and match the shoulder seams. And then pin them in a place and let's sew them together. You can use a sewing machine or a serger, whatever you have at home. Just remember to use a stretch stitch for your stretch fabrics as well as an appropriate needle for your jerseys and your stretch knits. Once the shoulder seams are done, now go ahead and take your sleeves, place them on a fold and mark the center of the sleeve with a pin needle. Then take your bodice, place it with the right side down and open it and lay it flat. 
Then take your sleeve and match the shoulder seam with the center of the sleeve, right sides facing to each other. And then pin the sleeve to the bodice using pin needles and then use your sewing machine or a serger to attach the sleeve. Once both of the sleeves are in, go ahead and lay your top like this, where the sleeves are matching and the side seams of the top are matching as well. And then what you're going to do is you will do a stitch from the bottom of the sleeve all the way around to the underarm seam and then all the way down to the hem of the top. You will repeat this on both sides of the top. Now, if you're using your serger for this project and you would like to know more about little tips and tricks on how to use your serger, let's say more efficiently and just, uh, you know, some little secrets on how to nest the seams or how to tuck the seams in, then I actually did a full video on serger tips and I will leave it for you guys in the info box below. So if you want, check it out. Now I'll go ahead and measure your wrist and take the full measurement. So for me, that's going to be seven inches. Make sure that it's pretty comfortable and it's not too tight or not too loose. And then determine how tall you want your cuff to be. For me, that's going to be three inches on a fold. So the full measurement is going to be six inches. Go ahead and put those on the pattern paper and draft a cuff. After that, Cut two pieces on a fold, make sure that the stretch goes in the right direction, and then sew the side seams of your cuffs. After you've done that, go ahead and turn them right sides out and fold them so that way you'll get a nice little cuff like this. Now let's gather your sleeve and turn it into a fun bishop sleeve. Take your sleeve and on the very edge of the sleeve use a basing stitch which is basically your longest straight stitch and do it all the way around. Just make sure that you don't secure the threads because we will need them to pull on them in order to cinch the actual sleeve all together. So if you're using a serger, this step you will need to complete on a sewing machine. Now once that is done, take one of the threads and pull on them. You will see that your sleeve will start to gather. Now continue this step until you have the same size of the sleeve as of the cuff. So you want to make sure that they both match because guess what? <laughs> the next step is we will need to attach the cuff to the sleeve. Place the cuff inside of the sleeve, right sides facing, and then make sure that the seams match so that way your cuff is looking down and your sleeve is looking down as well. And then you just sew it all together and this is how it looks when the cuff and the sleeve is all done. And it was quite a fiddly process so I did not manage to film it, but it's pretty straightforward. You just sew it all together. Now let's talk about the hem of our top. And I have decided that I'm going to go for a band on the bottom. And this is also a great option for those who are using a sewing machine because it does not require you to do any hem of a zigzag stitch or a twin needle or anything else like that. Doing a band on the bottom is always a little bit easier. And I am just going to eyeball it. So I'm going to cut it two and a half inches shorter and then the width of my top and the actual band is going to be three inches wide which is going to give me an inch and a half on the fold. And then you will sew the side seam of our band. You will fold it in half, match it with the side seams of our top and then sew it in place. Easy as that. Yes, your band is smaller than your actual top so you will need to stretch the band in place as you're sewing it all together. And this is how the band looks when it's all done. And don't worry, once you put it on, it's not gonna look wavy. It's actually going to sit really nicely on your hips because we did cut the band a little bit smaller than the actual top. And that, that's what's going to give us that really nice fit uh, on our hips. Now, let's move on to the final step, which is going to be the neck band. Now for the neck band, this is what I always do. I measure the actual length of the almost finished garments neckline. Then I take that measurement and I take 80% of that. And that is going to be the length of my neck band. Then I cut my neck band and the width of my neck band, I usually take two inches, which is going to give me one inch on the fold 
plus seam allowances. Once you have your neck band cut, we will go ahead and sew it together. Then you will find center front of your neck band and center front of your top and center back of your top as well. Then you will take your neck band and you will match the center back and center front of the neck band to the top and then pin it in place. Make sure that it's nice and secure because once you're going to be sewing your neck band onto your top, you will need to stretch it in place just like we did with the bottom hem because again, your neck band is smaller than your top and you will need to stretch it in place in order to get that really nice and crisp finish. a beautiful bishop sleeve sweater or sweatshirt or top or whatever you want to call it. The point is that you made it with confidence and now you can make many other beautiful things with just your two hands and your beautiful mind and just a little bit of thoughtful creativity. So guys, I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't seen other drafting and sewing tutorials, then go ahead and check them out. I'll link them somewhere right over here on the screen. Have fun, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.